Hello, my name is Turin Batch. I'm a seventh grader from Heights Middle School. Hi, my name is Shreyas, and I'm a seventh grader from Heights Middle School. Our science group project is testing the replication of Marima algae or Agrocapilla lini when asexually propagated to Zooxanthella, ultimately source coral reef. In this project, we are determined to find the preeminent ratio of Marianthi. Essentially, the project revolves around the hypothesis. If we read both Zooxanthella and Marima algae, then the new algae will be born during the day and sink at night because the parent algae, Marima, follows the same traits. After executing the given procedure assigned to this project, the primary discovery is consistent of moving cells in the specimen, a view of the Marianthi cell, and the buoyancy of Marianthi. After asexual reading for two weeks, the this propagation call for better results than expected. When testing the unembellished marine mold, the algae is the same, regardless of trans regardlessly transporting dependent algae, Marianthi, to the ocean bed. In, in implementation of Marianthi and coral reef, we'll be able to replenish reef barriers in decline, such as Australia's Great Barrier Reef. Coral cover percentage has been depleting in both marine reserves and open ocean bed. The Great Barrier Reef's in decline has dropped to 7% coral cover, along with three barriers located on south, center, and leaf, and south, center, and north latitudes across the world. Barrier reefs have been in decline due to cod, cyclones, and blue chains. The primary objective of this project, the primary objective of this project is to eliminate cots and bleaching factor in the reduction of coral reefs. Coral reefs have large scale implications on the planet, even with their small surface area. They're able to generate half the world's oxygen and eliminate a third of the world's carbon emissions in the atmosphere. Even with all these benefits, the population of coral reefs have nearly halved in the past 30 years on account of various reasons such as climate change, coral bleaching, and cyclones. The goal of this project is to, is to ascertain an appropriate ratio to create a hybrid algae with the eventual potential to boost oxygen production. And to come with the conclusion with their guiding question, will the breed of zoos and and marine algae follow the same characteristic trait of buoyancy as, uh, as marine algae? Coral reefs are made up of animals called polyps, which specifically provide, uh, produces oxygen in the reef. Another species that's important to coral life is algae. An algae called zooxanthella and polyps have a symbiotic relationship. The algae provides glucose, while the polyps provide minerals and carbon dioxide. In this experiment, the algae used was zooxanthella because this is the only algae that was used by coral reefs or can work with coral reefs in a symbiotic format. However, the issue that arises stems from zooxanthella's ability to be buoyant. Essentially, the algae can float in water, but this trait is not useful because the reefs are located at the ocean bed. To counteract this trait, another algae, marima, was used. Marima algae has the ability to rise or sink depending on the time of day. Both the marima and zooxanthella were bred and referred to as marianthi throughout the experiment. The dependent variable is how much marianthi is produced. While the independent variable, the given amount of marima algae in each petri dish. This hybrid algae can be used in the future to potentially boost stocks in production for reefs. I'm going to tell you a little more about these algae here. Why do marima float during the day and not at night? Was light the ultimate trigger? Were all the algae within the marima bowl actively photosynthesizing, which is those on the surface? Scientists measured the photosynthetic rate on the body and inside the ball's interior. They found daytime fluctuations were anatomically dependent. The daytime and nighttime photosynthetic rate inside the ball was comparable to the exterior of marima during nighttime. Thus, the spherical shape limits marima's photosynthetic ability compared to, let's say, a leaf, in, which in turn determines the ball's size. When exposed to bright light at their entrance sunrise, the, the marima pop up to the water surface more quickly than if they were exposed to bright light during their entry in midday. This comes from the scientist's hypothesis that the marimo's biological clock influences periodic floating and photosynthesis. But there's not much to do about in, with this given information. As you might have heard, when the, pre, when the prey population increases, the predator population increases as well. So that's similar to what we're doing here. We'd like to introduce coral, we would like to increase coral colonies in the symbiotic format by increasing zooxanthella colonies. As a result, the prey population starts to decrease and the prey population starts to increase, like I just said earlier. Now I'm gonna to talk to you a little more about zooxanthella. The life cycle of zooxanthella consists of two stages, like the coit stage and the metal mass. The most common stage in which zooxanthella are found in is in the coit stage. In this stage, they become intracellular symbiotes inside of the coral. They let go of their flagella and reproduction occurs. Zooxanthella undergo asexual reproduction by division called meiosis. meiosis. This occurs in the dark, and once the mother cell is exposed to light, it divides by cytokinesis. The two daughter cells released are two motor cells, which transitions to the other stage of their life cycle. Depending on the zooxanthella, it determines how long they stay in the stage. Zooxanthella are photoautotrophs, meaning they perform photosynthesis using the benefits that the coral provides for them. Corals are able to provide them with carbon dioxide and water of cellular respiration. When zooxanthella perform photosynthesis, they provide the coral with sugars, oxygen, and lipids. It helps the cycle continue and makes the relationship between coral and zooxanthella symbiotic. Now allow me to tell you a little bit about the algae selection methodology of our project. 
The algae selected to carry out this project comply under a very limited selection. To begin the methodology to con uh, to begin the methodology to uh, the selection of zooxanthella is very specific. Zooxanthella is the only algae that ca that carries a mutualistic or symbiotic relationship with co with coral. The symbiosis between corals and zooxanthella is supposed to be mutualistic, meaning that they both receive positive benefits from their partnership. Zooxanthella are provided with a safe place to live within the coral tissue, and they also get to use corals waste products as nutrients to power photosynthesis. The first component of Marion Lee was then declared. Although due to the reason that zooxanthella is buoyant, another algae, which is marimo algae, was used as a component in the propagation process, generating Marion Lee. Marimo algae's trait, its biological clock, or more, important, or more importantly, the algae's circadian rhythm was an important factor in the breeding of both of the algaes within Marianthaly. The algaes used in this project faced a very narrow selection before being bred. Before we talk about the um, uh, experimentation procedure, let me tell you a few of the materials you're gonna need. For this experimentation procedure, you're gonna need a Petri dish, carbon dioxide, microscopes, a microscope, microscope sl slides, a cover glass, water, copper glass, zooxanthella, marimo algae, and a pipe bed. What you're, gonna, what you're gonna wanna do first is arrange the Petri dishes in a spacious area before filling them uh, with zooxanthella, marimo algae, and water. Make sure these given measurements are constant throughout all of the Petri dishes. Distribute a constant rate of carbon dioxide into each Petri dish every day. Set, set these Petri dishes in a dark environment where no light is uh, able to reach them for the following 24 hours. Remove the Petri dishes from the dark environment and obs observe the Petri dishes for any change. Make sure to do this every day. Set the petri dishes in a, a UV light sufficient area. Um, and now that cytokinesis has begun, leave these petri dishes in a light prosperous area for the following one to two weeks. Carefully trim the outermost uh, border of the marimo algae. Take five samples and place them in a water to in a bowl or cup filled with water to measure their buoyancy. Place these five samples in an ultraviolet light sufficient. Place these other five uh, samples in a uh, ultraviolet light sufficient area, preferably the same conditions used before. Wait 24 hours and notice the buoyancy variation of Marianthaly, if any at all. If the algae sinks when testing buoyancy, it has, an, it has outermost regions containing Marianthaly. If the algae remains sinking for after 24 hours, that indicated that there is more Marianthaly than Marimo in the specimen. Take the, five, take the remaining five samples and observe them under the microscope. Observe for a propagation of zooxanthella and marimo algae cells. Collect data of both individual experiments. These are background data graphs in support of our claim and introduction. I'd like to introduce uh, one picture to you and I'll explain it to you as well. As you see on the left corner, that is a one picture, and that picture is a marianthaly cell which contributed to increasing marianthaly volume. It took uh, liquid specimens from uh, marimo algae to marianthaly and back to zooxanthella and back to marianthaly and we were able to notice that using the microscope and trace what talk you about another picture. So this picture right here uh, with, with the orange looking cells is actually representing zooxanthella and inside if you look quite closely that you can see all of its um, uh, internal all of each cell's internal organs. So this is like the whole center of the product. This is the data we're going to collect, it, collect since the beginning. So at the control of zero marine algae, there's zero marine produced. At, the, at 0 0.005 grams of marine algae, there's 0 0.003 grams of marine which means that there is 60% converted. At 0 0.007 grams of marine algae, there is 0 0.004 grams of marine which means 57% converted. This, uh, the range of marine, marine algae when producing marine needs to lie between 0 0.005 to 0 0.07 grams of marine algae to contain the best results in the best given specimen. At 0 0.009 grams of marine algae, there is a special outlier. I'm gonna mention that a little sooner, okay? At 0 0.63 grams of marine algae, there was 0 0.017 grams of marine which is not as big, it's, it's far less than the ratio of 60% or 57%. But since the specimen was a little bigger, we use it to gather data uh, when looking under scope and like buoyancy and other other individual experiments. At 0 0.84 grams of marine algae, there's zero marine produced. And there's two other specimens that we don't include in this graph, but we were also able to notice 
after increasing um, marima from here at 0 0.97 grams of marine algae, there was zero marianthi produced. At 1.44 grams of marianthi, there was zero, at 1.44 grams of marine algae, my bad. There was zero, mar there was zero marianthi produced. So Chris can talk to you about another graph. So as you can see, this green line is representing the amount of algae that was not propagated into uh, Marianthaly. So this green line is representing the um, some amount, points. Yeah, some points of the um, Marimo algae. While this uh, orange line is representing the amount of uh, algae that was propagated into Marianthaly. And these these faded lines uh, represent the trend lines or the amount of algae that was or was not propagated into um, Marianthaly. In further analyzation, coral populations decreased, declined from 27.5 to 14% of existing coral cover percentage in the Great Barrier Reef, with an average of 10% total existing coral decline in the north, south, and central algae, including marine reserves. Consisting of the years 1985 through 2010, coral cover percentage has declined 22.5% with gross coral cover, with a scale up to 50% decline in the existing coral within the years of 1996 through 2003. In, trans in transition to Marianthi, the most efficient ratio of Marianthi consists of marine algae between the regions of 0.005 to 0.007 grams to 12.5 milliliters of zooxanthella to 12.5 milliliters of unornamented water. Both given specimens portray acts that include Marianthi cells in the outermost region of the marine algae, and they do not manifest buoyancy. In addition, these two specimens have converted 57 to 60% of their marine algae, or Aegrapilla lini, into Marianthi. Trends in the given two-week asexual breeding process include a manure smell during day six through eight and moving cells in the microscopic picture of marine algae when observing underscope. Contrasting the outliers of this project emerged in the buoyancy test of this project. When testing buoyancy, specimen six, like I said earlier, 0 0.009 grams of marine algae to 12.5 milliliters of unornamented water, 12.5 milliliters of zooxanthella tips down to the bottom of the water body, nearly floating, but exhibiting a variation in buoyancy. It is believed that this is due to the deposition of the whole marine biology specimen. Since marine antlis to sink and marine biology to float, the strength of both tugs is further equalized and results in the outlier mentioned. Ultimately, three out of five marine biology tested have outermost regions consisting of the algae marine antlis. Throughout this project, we discovered the foremost preeminent ratio of marine antlis, which was 0 0.005 grams, 0 0.007 grams of marine algae, to 12.5 milliliters of zooxanthella to 12.5 milliliters of unornamented water. In search of the sustain, in search of a sustainable ratio of Marianthaly, we simultaneously were able to comprehend the scientific utilities of Marianthaly when implemented into a real life scenario, such as subsiding carbon dioxide and its coming consequences, oxygen depletion and its co corresponding escalation in temperature, oxygen scarcity and its given repercussion, coral influx and its microplastic outturn, and phytoplankton depletion and marine biome uh, effect. The results of our project not only supported, but furthermore exceeded the scientific assumptions earlier stated in the hypothesis of this project. The independent variable of this project is the amount of marine algae in each petri dish, while the dependent variable being the number of marianthaly propagated. The amount of marianthaly propagated. Yeah. Some confounding, uh, confounding variables were the, like, such as the sunlight or carbon dioxide, because we cannot get an exact number of those. Variables. Mm -hmm. The step of situating both given algaes in a dark environment before placing them in an ultraviolet light sufficient area was a benefactor in the procedure of this project. Changing that changes that could be made to this experiment uh, experimentation procedure in the future include testing with different brands of zooxanthella and propagating more specimens to test. In conclusion, within this project, we came upon multiple incidental benefactors and had supplemental results when it comes to supporting the hypothesis of this project. Applications. There are a vast number of applications of this project. How increase in greenhouse gases can multiply polar ice caps, increase temperatures due to the growing use of fossil fuels, and many more. Though there is a multi year conveniences and scientific utilities to this project, here are the primary applications in detail. Subsiding carbon dioxide and its common consequences. Coral reefs eliminate 33% of the world's carbon dioxide, the given coral cover population. By increasing coral cover to its apex population and supplying coral with the surfate of Marianthaly, we're able to push this number to its limits. The outcome is given actions to cut down on CO2's biggest threat. Greenhouse gases have far-ranging environmental and health effects. They cause climate change by trapping heat, and they also contribute to respiratory disease from smog and air pollution. Extreme weather, food supply disruptions, and increased wildfires are other effects of climate change caused by greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. Oxygen depletion and its corresponding escalation in temperature. With already increasing temperature due to carbon dioxide, 
oxygen depletion adds on as well. The oxygen levels face a decrease, and there's correspondingly an increase in temperature. We were able to have an anti-forcing drop of O2 with this project. Reducing oxygen levels thins the atmosphere, allowing more sunlight to reach the Earth's surface. More sunlight lets more moisture evaporate from the plant's surface, which increases humidity. Because water vapor is a greenhouse gas, more heat gets trapped near the Earth's surface, and temperatures rise. Oxygen scarcity is given repercussion. Similar to, similar to how coral eliminate carbon dioxide, coral reefs also generate up to half the world's oxygen, only if this percent coral covered. This number could also be further amplified. The truth is that this, the, amount of given, the given amount of OTM on this, on this planet will only last up to 400 more years. The chemicals like argon, nitrogen, carbon dioxide may last in our atmosphere. It is unable for humans to breathe in air lacking oxygen. Curl influx and its microplastic outturn. Higher oxygen levels signify animals can grow larger, healthier, and still maintain a supply of oxygen in their muscles. This complies with krill as well. An influx of krill means more broken down plastic. In 2018, study discovered that animals play a role in the microplastic breakdown. Researchers found that Antarctic krill can pulverize microplastics. These small ocean dwelling crustaceans break down microplastics into even smaller, non harmful nanoplastics. Phytoplankton depletion and its marine biome effect. By providing a glut of marine plate to coral reef, we'll be able to divert the coral from its consummation in zooplankton. Like human, a supplement of sugar is important to satisfy the obligations of coral. Thus, corals also eat by catching tiny floating animals called zooplankton. All the marine animal is able to issue coral with the carbohydrate, not only sugar, but additionally starch. The supplementary carbohydrate would be able to quench the obligations of coral, if not at least diverting the animal from the source, phytoplankton. And without plankton, the marine ecosystem is to collapse. Plankton are the base of the marine food web. And without them, all large organisms would probably die. No plankton means no fish. No fish means no food for millions of people. Without plankton or ocean life, millions, if not billions of people will start to starve. The ultimate goal of this project is to replenish repairs and damage with a healthy ratio of marine plankton. The tests to execute this plan include a green fluorescent light test, a microparticle buoyancy test, and many tests of inversion put against marine plankton. In the near future, we will perfect and rather exemplary the ratio of marine plankton. We will generate larger samples and test these samples with green galaxy coral to see if experimentation is successful. We will also identify the quenchability of coral with additional carbohydrate of starch issued by Marianthi. It is theoretical to further extend this procedure. The ramification of this given action includes subsiding carbon dioxide and its coming consequences, coral influx and its microplastic outturn, retrieving oxygen scarce, scarcity, phytoplankton depletion, and its marine biome effect. And oxygen depletion is corresponding escalation in temperature. In the long run, the objective of this project is to reach all these applications and savor the earth for as long as possible. This is our bibliography, and we also collected a lot of data in a journal, and we had it. We had an organized uh, science fair notebook, and that's how we contributed. That's how we contributed to the data on this project. Thanks for listening to us, and thank you. Thank you. All right, so this was a phenomenal project. Uh, I just had a couple questions uh, regarding it. Uh, the first one was, uh, what interested you to pick up this topic, and like, where did you get the idea for this topic? What interested me about this topic is like the never is the project is, this is the project itself the, the implications the never ending reach and the project itself the fact that if we don't do what's right today then the future can't live like us tomorrow so if if we if we can conserve the earth and you know do what's best for society now then the future can live just like us without any harm there won't be any harm against them so a couple couple morals that you know helped us keep uh, kept me going in this project were that if you don't do what's right today then you won't be there to do what's right tomorrow and something saved is something um, earned and something that's not bad is something good and all these like morals kept me going and they interested me to create the project and and you know like feel good for it or you know feel love and passion for the project yeah that's that's a wonderful um passion-filled, futuristic-looking answer, response. Uh, so going on, uh, going off of that, so like, tell me, did you find this uh, idea published in research before? Or like, if so, then like, how did you modify your idea to be specific and change in None something new? this was published before. Uh, each oh. algae's reproduction was previously documented, but they were never put together as Maria and Lee or this component. This is completely original and only based off of the scientific detail of scientific aspect inquiries of mean trace. And when it comes to like the applications or um, the applications or implications, uh, they're, they've all been previously established, although they're never, they've never been put in the combination that we show in this project. And 
they, you know, they play a very important role, but they have not been put together in this combination before. I see. So what you're telling me is that the Mary Anthony that you have produced is solely based on your project alone? That is solely based on the inquiries of Mutris. That, that's amazing. Uh, my next question was, uh, uh, so let, let me hear a little bit about your project one more last time in a very simplified way. Uh, what was the question you were answering? And how did you go about answering that question? The question that we were trying to answer is, will a bred version of Zuzanthella and Marimo algae result in a hybrid algae that uh, follows the same character characteristic trait of buoyancy as Marimo algae? And we went about solving this uh, question um, by actually breeding both of these algae, Zuzanthella and Marimo algae, breeding them, and coincidentally discovering all of these uh, benefits. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, I, when I was listening to your presentation, the amount of benefits was uh, quite enormous. Um, moving on with my next question, uh, what did you learn when you were, uh, what did you learn about science itself um, for your project uh, when you were doing it before and during the experiment? Before the project, we, the sciences that we were into or we looked after were the asexual breeding processes, the breeding process of Moimo, the breeding process of Zuzanthella, and how these two algaes work, the characteristic traits. You know, we just looked into the algaes and, you know, what, how do these algaes behave? How, do these algae, how are these algaes going to behave if we breed those two together? And we just looked about what the algaes and stuff. But throughout the project, we discovered some incidental benefits, like Trey said. And we understood how these could, you know, further sprout. Like, how can one benefit actually be five benefits? How can, how can one good thing be five good things? So we kind of sprouted our ideas. And let's say, if you uh, talk about the krill inputs that I talked to you earlier about, then that, came, that comes from oxygen. Coral reef can make the same amount of oxygen, it can do the same thing, but it can also break down plastics. So we were able to cover two topics with that. We were able to cover microplastics in the ocean, and we were able to cut, uh, cover you know, oxygen. So we were just sprouting our ideas, and we learned more about the sciences of environmental science, and we looked into oxygen, carbon dioxide, krill influx, and all these things. Wow, sounds like uh, the project was uh, very helpful in increasing your knowledge base when it comes to science. Um, so then tell me specifically in your experiment, like what did you learn from the data that you uh, found? So uh, from the data that we were able to gather, we learned how big, uh, how much coral is really dying and how big uh, coral decline really is. Um, which is why we created this uh, hybrid algae um, by giving it off to coral reefs, we were actually, um, they would actually be able to reproduce uh, and coral reefs would actually grow faster. Um, and since this uh, new coral that we've developed, uh, most of the time it stays near um, the ocean uh, floor, um, it is able to gather with more coral more, uh, more quickly, and w which will actually decrease uh, coral reproduction time by quite a bit. I see. So, uh, tell me specifically, um, what was the ratio that you used to get like a the maximum production of the Vera Anthony? Uh, um, we use um, twelve point five uh, milliliters of uh, Zuzanthella to twelve point five milliliters of water to about zero point zero zero five grams to zero point zero zero seven grams of uh, marine algae. Our best ratio was two thousand five hundred to one. Uh, in terms of zoos and algae. And can you tell me percentage-wise how much uh, uh, Mary Anthony was produced uh, from the graph? 50, 57 to 60 percent are two best specimens. I see, I see. So two out of every three? Yes. Wow, okay. Uh, nearly, yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, moving on, looking at a future aspect, um, if you had to do it again, what would you change? And then what improvements would you make from your project? If we were to do this project again, we think that we would um, actually increase the breeding time between both of the algae, as well as increase the number of samples that we use, so that we could actually um, make more accurate, get more accurate results. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, let me hear about well, like what's next. Are you going to continue this project, or are you going to jump to a different topic? We're def we're definitely going to continue this topic. We're going to have a variation. 
So the next variation yeah. would be how do how does how do coral reefs or how does uh, green galactic coral respond to the propagation of zooxanthella and marine algae? And in the near future, we would like to add amylase enzymes to our mixture here because amylase enzymes convert starch to sugar. So we will, we believe that we could have uh, this mixture of carbohydrate become all sugar, and that would help quench, um, you know, coral. And uh, we would like to apply after this in the near future. We'd like to put some more tests against it because you know you want make you want to make sure it's nice and healthy. And when put um. In specification, we'd like to put a test of inversion against it because in the ocean, you know, you have a lot of difference in temperature. So, you know, a test of inversion against Marianthi. And then we'd like to see how this algae works with animals because if we want to, you know, drop it on the ocean floor, to, to the ocean floor, then it's going to have to pass through some animals. And coral and zooxanthella live between, you know, jellyfish or clams or stuff like that. So, we want to see how this new algae works with animals. And if that's all right, then we would like to, we would, we would really like to apply for some federal approvals to test in uh, public places such as our intercontinental oceans. And if we do eventually harvest the amount of algae that we, would, that we, that we want to and reach all these applications, we like to, we like to put some of this algae against research to further develop um, algae oil, which is an alternative for fossil fuels or coal. And we like to help develop, since we're going to, have, we, uh, we want to harness some uh, algae oil with the harvested algae, and we also want to work towards making biodegradable uh, products or consumer goods with the algae. I see. So, I mean, that was enormous when it came to, uh, like, what you could go differently when it came to this project. Is there anything else left when it comes to how this knowledge can benefit society? Um... Uh, using this knowledge, we think that society can actually participate in what we're doing, which would actually increase what we're thinking of doing, like Jared said, bio, bio, uh, biodegradable products and whatnot. Um, yeah. Yeah, if society can uh, actually use the knowledge that we've given them and uh, through, through this uh, project, it would actually really help our environment, you know. It would, um, not only would it uh, help the ocean, but it would also help our, our atmosphere and, um, yeah. We really yeah. hope we can reach all these applications here, and you know we're hoping for the best, and we would like to continue in the future to better develop the idea, and you know get some more things to life, and bring some more things to life. So it's been really nice talking to you. Yeah, definitely. I look forward to these future benefits. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.